If you don't want to spend a small fortune on your next phone but still want a good camera, fast performance and solid battery life, these are the best devices you should look into right now, but also the pitfalls you should avoid. Hey guys, Vic with Phone Arena here with the best budget phones around, so let's kick this off, but real quickly shout out to Blackview that makes some super affordable Android phones for sponsoring this video. So probably the number one budget phone that comes up often is the $400 iPhone SE, the cheapest in Apple's lineup. While still plenty powerful, we don't really recommend this phone right now, it has gotten quite old, has quite poor battery life and lacks a few key features. The only real advantage the iPhone SE has is its super compact physical size, but if size is not a top priority, most people would be a lot better with the iPhone 11. It comes with a larger and more practical 6.1 inch screen which makes typing easier and in stark contrast to the iPhone SE, the iPhone 11 actually has excellent battery life. It also beats most phones in this budget segment when it comes to performance and image quality. And it has night mode support so you get good quality images in dim light as well. There are a few minor complaints about it, the lower resolution of the screen is one, but what bothers us more is just the poor scaling of the text, so text in the browser often appears way too tiny and hard to read, and you also have those big borders around the screen that kind of spoil the looks, but if you can live with that, the iPhone 11 is simply the best budget iPhone around. Now if you prefer an Android phone, one popular option is the Galaxy A52 5G, but there is an even better deal around and that is the Galaxy S20 FE or Fan Edition, an underrated gem. So first and foremost, the S20 FE comes with last year's flagship Qualcomm chip, the Snapdragon 865, compared to a mid-range chip on the Galaxy A52 right here, so the S20 FE is orders of magnitude faster. Second, Second, it just has a far better camera, with a dedicated zoom lens that you don't get on the A52. And if you care about video recording, the lack of video stabilization on the A52 is a deal breaker. Videos look very jittery, while videos recorded on the S20 FE look nice and stabilized. Last but not least, these days you can actually score the S20 FE for about $500, which is the same price as the A52, so despite it being an older phone, it really is better in practically every regard. Another great option you have is Google's budget Pixel 5a. So it might not impress with specs alone, but it is one of the better budget options. It costs $450 and the best thing about it is the clean software and Google support with instant Android updates. The Pixel also has one of the longest lasting batteries we have tested. Now I personally have been using this phone in the past couple of months and I often finish even longer days with 40% or more juice left. Good stuff. And it's just built like a tank. Unlike modern phones made out of inevitably fragile glass, the back of the Pixel is made of good old metal. The phone features a 6.3 inch OLED screen with beautiful colors, I also love the traditional fingerprint scanner on the back here, much more reliable than the modern type that is embedded inside the screen. And just like you'd expect from a Pixel, the 5a has an excellent dual camera with the main and ultra wide shooters, dynamic range, colors, everything looks great. And it takes great photos at night too with the dedicated night sight mode. One minor complaint I have with it is that automatic brightness just doesn't work properly and it's driving me nuts often, but that's something I can kind of overlook. Next up, the OnePlus Nord 2 is the one device on this list that is not available in the US and 
the US is missing out. The Nord 2 costs just around $400 but offers top specs for the money. It's equipped with the MediaTek Dimensity 1200 processor which simply said it just better than most rivals in this price range and it also sports a main and an ultra wide camera that perform above expectations. All of this comes in the phone with a 6.4 inch form factor which I think is just the perfect middle ground between big and small and you also get a quite solid 4500 mAh battery on board. The best feature of the Nord 2 however is just how fast it charges. First it actually ships with a charger, you get a 65 watt charger in the box and that takes just around 30 minutes to fully top up the phone. That's faster than many flagship phones that still take around 2 hours for a full charge. And finally, we have just Motorola as a brand. Motorola sales have really taken off recently after LG quit the smartphone market in early 2021 and Motorola has released a plethora of new phones. The Moto G100 offers the best balance between value and performance and we recommend a closer look or if you're on a tight budget, the Moto G Power remains an attractive option with incredible battery life. And if you want a truly ultra affordable phone, check out this one here called Blackview A100. It comes in this super clean white box and inside you get both a cable and an 18 watt charging brick. Plus it ships in a basic case, which is just nice as you won't have to purchase a case separately. The Blackview A100 has a large 6.7 inch screen and comes with a quite large battery as well. The size is 4680 mAh which ensures you won't struggle with battery life. Keep in mind that this one here costs less than $200 so don't expect the cutting edge here but it is able to snap some quite good looking photos with that camera system and it is well put together with a really solid construction. Under the hood you get the MediaTek Helio P70 processor along with 6 gigs of RAM and we were able to play some popular games like Asphalt easily Plus you get a plentiful 128GB of storage on board which is definitely nice to have at this price point. So it really just checks a lot of boxes for its affordable price and if you're interested you can find a link for it in the description box below. And that wraps up the best budget phones around. Some truly great devices but which one is your personal favorite? and what makes it better than the rest. I'm really curious to hear about your best budget phone picks in the comments below. Maybe you can surprise me with some device that I have not included on this list and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed watching this. So thanks for watching, my name is Vic and I'll see you in the next one.